Welcome back, everyone, for today's video. We are going to be taking a look at a game that was played in the seventh round of the London Chess Classic, which is being held in the great city of London. Now, the London Chess Classic is a tournament that I actually competed in from 2009 through 2018. Oddly enough, I celebrated many birthdays there, and this year the tournament has returned after a couple of years hiatus, and of course, it is happening over my birthday once again. Now, I have not been following this tournament very closely because I've been very busy getting ready for the Champions Chess Tour final here in Toronto, which is why you see this new background and setup behind me. At any rate, I went to a players meeting today. There are a lot of players are talking to Fabiano, Noterbeck, Magnus, etc. And one of the topics was this very interesting game that was played today between Hans Neiman from America and Bartel Mateus from Poland. So without further ado, let's jump right into the action. So here we go. So Hans opens with the move e4, we get the move pawn to e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now we have bishop c4 from Hans. Now Hans has become one of the foremost experts in recent times playing the Italian or what we like to affectionately call the Gucci piano. Now Hans played this a lot in the US Championship with some mixed results, he won some games, lost some games, but it is a system that he's very familiar with. So. We get knight to f6, and now Hans plays move d3 here to guard the pawn on e4, and now we have this move h6 being played by Bartel Mateus. Now, h6 is a move that is not played all that frequently. Generally, when black plays h6, the idea is to go g6 and bishop g7. Now, a fun little story that I will tell you guys about is way back, probably in early 2020, Hans Neiman himself actually reached out to me and asked me what he should play against the Italian. And one of the funny things that I told him that was that there was a system with g6 and bishop g7, which keeps it a little bit more in balance. So, Mateus plays h6 here, playing the system with g6 down the road. Normally, black would play the move bishop to c5 here, followed by castle and d6, developing the light square bishop. But there's a lot of theory, and h6 actually keeps it a little bit simpler because you know exactly what you're doing with g6, bishop g7, and down the road you want to push the f-pawn. So, Hans plays c3, we get the move d6 here, a4 played, and now we have g6 being played. Now, one of the reasons Hans plays a4 here is he wants to take some space, maybe play a5, but additionally, in a lot of these Rui Lopez Spanish systems or the Italian, one of the biggest ideas for black after playing d6 to guard the pawn on e5 is later on to play knight a5, attacking this bishop on c4, and forcing it off this long light square diagonal. So... Here we get this move a4, of course, by Hans. Now if knight a5 is played, you can go bishop to a2, keeping the bishop on this long diagonal. So after a4, we get this move g6 from Bartel Mateus. We have a5 played by Hans. a6 played here to stop white from pushing the pawn even further up the board. And maybe down the road, putting pressure on the pawn on a5. So after a6, we get castles, and now bishop g7 played, knight bd2, castles, and rook e1. Now white's idea, very similar to the systems with bishop c5, is quite simple. White wants to play knight f1 and knight e3, or knight to g3. So we get to move knight to h7 here, and here Hans plays an interesting move, queen to b3, trying to pressure the pawn on f7, as well as the pawn on the b7 square, and creating the classic right triangle. So after queen to b3, we get this move king to h8. Now this is a very fighting and aggressive move. What Mateus is doing here is he's giving up this pawn on f7 potentially. And if white doesn't snap the pawn on f7, say white plays a move like queen c2, after f5, suddenly black has a lot of play on the king side here. He's starting to push the pawns down the board and trying to create a classic pawn avalanche. So after queen b3, king h8 is played. Hans has no choice here but to grab this pawn on f7. But now, even though black is down a pawn here after queen f6 and bishop c4, you can play g5, and black's idea is quite concrete. He wants to put a lot of pressure on the f file. So Hans goes rook to e2, guarding the pawn on f2. We get the move g4, attacking the knight, and now we have this move knight to e1, and here h5 is played. Now, black is down a pawn here, but Mateus has this idea of going for the pawn avalanche and pushing the g and the h pawns down the board. White is a little bit cramped here. He hasn't developed the bishop on c1 or the rook on a1. He's got all these pieces on the queen side here, so the big question is, will a pawn avalanche be enough to win the game before white can untangle his pieces? So, Hans plays knight to f1, and now we get to move h4. Queen to d1 is played here, and now knight e7. Now, the idea behind knight e7 is simple. Black wants to use d's knights on the king side and attack as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, white has 
all of these pieces. You have one, two, three, four, five pieces on the back rank here. So Black is assuming he has enough to play for the pawn, and the computer actually, as you can tell from the valuation bar, thinks it's close to equal, which is generally a very bad sign since White is up a pawn, and it shows how legit Black's attack is here. So after knight to e7, we have queen d2 played, but played by Hans. Apparently a mistake. I'm not actually sure why exactly. I think the reasoning behind queen d2 here was to stop black from going bishop to h6. Because I think Hans actually thought that after bishop a6, if the bishops are traded, black's knights are very, very quick here. Knight's going to f4, maybe f3, maybe h3. And it just looks very, very scary to play. So Hans plays queen d2. We get this move c6 from Bartel Mateus. Now, this is a move that's apparently a mistake, but I understand the reasoning, which is to play for d5, trying to create chaos in the center of the board. So after c6, we have g3 played by Hans, and now we get d5, bishop to b3, and this move, bishop to e6. Now, this move also a mistake, but one of the things about this position is that it's very, very complicated. There are a lot of different options for both sides, and so mistakes are going to happen because neither player is a computer. So... After bishop to e6, we get this move knight g2. Again, apparently a mistake here. Not exactly sure why it's a mistake. Excuse me. But the computer doesn't like it. So now we have this move knight to g6 being played. And after knight g6, Hans decides to trade the pawns on d5 and play this move d4. Now again, very tough position to play for both sides. And one of the things that computers are very good at doing is ignoring the obvious looking threats and playing moves that look very unnatural. Now, this is a perfect example where the computer wants knight h4, which looks insane here because it looks like the knight's coming to g5 and f3. But after queen to e1, white is threatening to sack the rook on e5 or play d4, c4. And again, computer gives white a small edge. But from a human perspective, this is borderline impossible in my opinion. So... Hans instead plays d4. Now we get e4 here. And it looks, again, very, very tricky to play. Black wants to get knight g5 and knight f3. But on the other hand, white is very stable here. There really are no pawn breaks on the king side. So as long as there's no knight g5 or knight e5 and a knight coming to the f3 square, it feels like white should be okay. So Hans plays rook to a4, a very logical and human move here, trying to activate the rook to attack the pawn on b7, maybe go rook b6 and laterally attack the bishop and the queen. We get the move h3 here, knight e1 is played, and now we have queen f7 and rook to b4, trying to pressure the pawn on b4, trying to go rook b6, and even though white is very passive here with these pieces on the back rank, they do a whole lot. The knight on e1 stops the lolly checkmate on g2 here, and white can also go c4 down the road. There's pressure here, pressure on the center of the board, so the position remains extremely complex. So we get rook c8 here played by... Bartel Mateus, and now we have bishop c2 being played. A slight mistake here. Probably queen d1 is a little bit better because down the road, c4 is a pawn push that's supported by the bishop to put pressure on this diagonal. Nonetheless, Hans plays bishop c2, and now we get this move bishop to f6. And now black wants to jump with the horse to g5 and go for knight f3, or play bishop g5 and exchange the dark square bishops. So here Hans plays queen to d1. And now we get this move, bishop d8. Now, bishop d8 is completely reasonable because it pressures the pawn in a5. But for myself personally here, I probably would have played bishop g5 or knight to g5 here, trying to force the issue on the king side immediately. Bartel plays bishop d8 instead, putting, putting pressure on the pawn in a5. And now we get bishop h6 from Hans. An excellent move here because one of the big issues for white here is white would love to go knight to e3, putting pressure on the pawns on g4 and d5. But now there's knight g5 here with ideas like knight to f3, and white is in a lot of trouble. But once you get bishop to h6 being played, now white can play knight e3 because the bishop is no longer hemmed in by the knight on the diagonal, and you can always trade for the knight or the bishop. So we get rook to g8 being played here, and after rook g8, now we have c4 from Hans, and this is pretty much an only move, which is why I really don't like this, this move, bishop d8, because bishop h6 and c4, it feels like desperation, and in fact, computer actually thinks that even though it is desperation, white now has an advantage, because the central pawns are very, very weak on e4 and d5 here, and if you get takes, takes, for example, suddenly both of the diagonals are open, we have a wooden shield in the middle of the board, and white is actually very close to winning. So after c4, we get this move bishop to g5 played by Bartel. And this is a clear sign that he's made a mistake because he should have played bishop g5 a few moves earlier. Nonetheless, he does it here. Now we get takes, takes, and Hans plays knight to e3. And now the knight on e3 is perfectly positioned to pressure both the pawns on d5 and g4. And if black goes knight f3 after takes, takes, suddenly the knight on e3 also stops the lolly checkmate on g2 as well. 
So it's looking very good for Hans here. Now, Bartel is mission, I think, probably sensing some desperation, feeling like his attack's not crashing through. Throws more fuel on the fire by playing this move. Knight to h4, sacrificing a knight. After knight to h4, Hans has to take the knight. If you don't take, suddenly with these knights coming in, white is in a lot of trouble. So Hans takes the knight. We get knight to f3, and now we have this move king h1 being played. Now, if Hans were to trade the knights on f3 after pawn takes knight, the king on g1 is in check, and white will lose this rook on e2. So we get king to h1. Bartel now plays the move knight takes to h2, sacrificing a second knight here, going all in. Now, one of the great things for Bartel here, unlike Hans, is that in this situation, since he's down material, he has to keep sacking, keep attacking. He doesn't really have to look very hard for many ideas, because if he doesn't checkmate here, he will simply lose the game. So, Hans plays C, takes D5. We get G3 being played. Another very aggressive move. Bartel realizing that it's it's basically all in here. Put all the chips and sack all the pieces. Go for the checkmate on the White King on H1. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, that is life. So, after G3, we get D takes E6. Hans is now up two pieces, but we have G2 check. And uh-oh, spaghetti. Black is threatening to queen the pawn on the G file and win the game. So, Hans sacks the knight on G2. We get pawn takes knight. And here he plays the move king g1. A very important move here because if you do play knight takes g2, for example, after queen to f3, bishop takes e4, and queen to h3, suddenly black is winning the game here. You're threatening to go for a classic checkmate like knight to f3 here, checkmate the king on h1. If white plays king g1 after knight to f3 check, if you go king f1, there's queen h1 checkmate. And if you play bishop f3, queen f3 in this position, the only way really to stop the checkmate is to go queen f1. But now black has rook to c1, sacking the rook. If you take, it's checkmate in one with queen takes g2. If you play rook e1, takes, takes, queen g2, again, is simply checkmate. So Hans correctly plays the move king to g1 here. And now we get the move queen to f4, and Hans plays rook takes e4. Again, almost an only move here. If you play a move like, let's say, rook takes b7, suddenly after queen takes h4, the idea is very simple. If you play rook e4, I sack the knight with knight f3, and after takes queen h1, once again, this is simply checkmate. So Hans again finds the only move, rook takes e4, but the great news for Hans here is that the computer says this is plus 7 and completely winning. So now Bartel sacks the queen with queen takes pawn on f2. Temporary sacrifice because after king takes queen, black creates a new queen on g1. But after king to e2, white is up a bishop here. He's got this pass to e pawn and it looks like it should be very good. Nonetheless, Bartel Mateus continues to find resources playing this move knight to f1, threatening to maybe go knight g3 check, forking the king and the rook, or maybe even rook g2 check as well. Now we get queen to c1 from Hans, threatening to checkmate in one with queen to h6. After queen to c1 here, we now get the move rook to g2 sec, bar, rook to g2 check, I should say. And now Bartel is sacrificing a rook. So Bartel sacked two knights. He sacked a queen. Now he sacks the rook. So how many more pieces can Bartel possibly sacrifice? After rook to g2, Hans plays the move king to d1. Now, this move is not the best move. Computer wants king to d3, I think, technically. Or maybe it's the same thing, or g3. I guess, actually, it's the same thing, because the computer wants to play a repetition and then go king to d1 anyway. So we get king to d1 immediately. After king to d1, Bartel Mateus sacks another rook with rook takes c2 here, attacking the queen on c1. Now, at this point, both players have reached time control. This is move number 44. Hans has about 34 minutes on the clock here. A lot of time to think in this very full tile position. Hans uses two minutes here before playing this horrible, horrible blunder, queen takes rook. Now, again, if Hans is one or two minutes on the clock, it's a very understandable mistake. But in this position with so much time on the clock, it's fairly shocking to see. Now, the winning move here would have been this move, queen to h6, checking the king on h8. And after king g8, white can ignore this with e7. And even though black has castle mania with the two rooks on the seventh rank, white is simply winning the game here. For example, if black plays this move knight to e3 check, and this, by the way, is what I suspect Hans missed. After knight e3, if white were to take with the rook, rook to d2 would be checkmate here. The king is stuck on d1. And after queen e3, queen e3, white does not take the queen because, once again, rook d2 is checkmate. But you can, in between, push the pawn, promote to a queen, check the king on h uh, king on g8. And after king h7, rook takes b7, king h6, for example. White simply has a checkmate with check, king g6, queen h7, king f6, and queen f7 is mate. So, in this position, queen to h6 would have been winning here if black were to play rook to d2, for example. You can sack the queen, and after rook takes queen, king c1, black no longer has any checks. With the rook behind this past e-pawn, white will promote the pawn to a queen and win the game. 
So instead, Hans plays this horrible blunder, queen takes c2. And now after rook takes c2, it's still kind of okay for white, but we went from plus 7 back to close to even. So we get knight takes knight takes rook on c2. Bartel Mateus plays knight e3 check. We get king d2, queen to f2, king to d3. And now Bartel plays the move knight takes c2. A very important move here if you were to take with the queen. After king takes e3, white has two rooks for the queen. And with a passed e pawn should win the game. So we get knight takes c2 here. And now Hans plays this move d5, which starts to throw the game away. Now the computer says that after rook takes b7, it's still actually a draw with queen to f3, king d2, queen takes e4, and this move e7 here. Because white is threatening to go rook b8 and push the e pawn, the rook guards the pawn on e7. Combined with the king on the back rank, black can't win the game. But instead, Hans plays the move d5 here. And now after knight takes rook, rook takes knight, and queen to c5, we get this move rook d4, queen to d6. And here, even though white has resources to potentially save the game, black is blockading the two pass pawns, and with the king coming up to f6 and e7, black is going to have great winning chances. So, Hans plays king to e4 here. We get the move king to g7. And now after king to g7, we have this move rook to d3. After rook to d3, we get this move queen h2. Apparently a mistake but a very understandable move. The computer wants to move queen to e7 instead, but it's a very strange move to play because white can go king to e5 and d6, or even something like rook to g3, forcing the king. I guess king f8 is okay here, but after king to f8, rook to f3, white still might have some chances after king e8 and rook f4 with ideas like king f5, king g6, and pushing the h pawn up the board. So we get queen to h2, which is a slight mistake, but nonetheless, Hans now plays move rook to c3, which effectively loses the game on the spot. Now, the last chance for Hans to save the game here was to play this move d6, trying to push p, push the e and d pawns up the board. But after d6, white still maybe can play queen h4. And I guess after king d5, queen g5, king c4, maybe this is a draw. I just noticed the computer actually said queen e2 is maybe also winning somehow. But after rook e3, check, and king f5, queen d5, rook e5, uh, there's queen f3, king g5, and queen f6 winning. Now, again... To be very clear, these are all very deep computer lines. Clock running down here, you're down to 20 minutes. The fact that the queen can check every which way here makes it very difficult to play such a move. But I do think that in such a situation, d6 was really the last try. And hope you can hope that it works. If you don't do it in black, it's the king over to the center. You simply lose the game with no chance. So Hans plays rook c3 here. We got the move queen takes h4, king to f5 played. And now we have queen h5 check, king to e4, queen h4. We get a little bit of a tickle. But after king f5, we have queen to h2, stopping the check on c7, stopping the pawn push to d6, and stopping rook g3 check as well. So Hans plays king to e4 back, and now we get king to g6 being played, rook to c8 played here. And now after queen to d6, black is completely winning. And the reason is simple. Black's king is getting over to the center of the board, and white is going to have trouble stopping it. Combine that with ideas like queen b4, threatening to pick up the pawns. And at this point, it's completely hopeless. So... Hans plays rook c2, get queen g3, rook c8 back, and now we have king g7 being played. Another very nice little nuance here by Bartel. He's basically waiting here because white still can't push the pawn due to the queen g4 check, capturing the rook and stopping the pawn promotion. You can't push either pawn. The rook doesn't really want to go off the 8th rank here, and black eventually should find a way to bring the king over. So we get king to d4 here. Now we have queen to f4 check being played, king to d3. Only move very sad that you can't go king c5. Because after queen to c1, I will pick up the rook on c8. So we get king to d3, queen to d6, king to c4. And now Bartel is finally able to bring the king over to the f and potentially the e file here. Because the queen stops the check on f8. So at this point, white really can't do a whole lot to stop, stop himself from losing the game. So we get rook to h8. Now we have queen c7 check, king to d4, queen g7 played here, rook to h1. And now we have king to e7. Bartel has managed to bring the king all the way back to the center of the board, and now it is very close to lost. We have king c5 being played here by Hans, and now we have this move queen g6. Another nice move here. If black were to take on b2, after rook h7, king f6, rook f7 here, king e5. Black is winning, but it feels scary because there are ideas like e7, etc. I guess here there's queen b5, mate, and 1. But nonetheless, it feels a little bit scary. Also, white can maybe go king d6 and try to hide the king in the center of the board. So... We get queen g6, which stops rook h7, but you also threaten to go to c2, checking the king on c5. Now we have rook c1, played by Hans. Queen to d3, another very nice move, threatening to check the king on e3, or check the king on c5, and attack the rook on c1. 
We get rook to c4 played, queen to e3, rook to d4, and now we have queen c1 back, checking the king on c5. Hans plays rook c4, we get queen takes b2, and now black has collected an extra pawn on the queen side, and white still cannot push these central pawns further up the board without losing material. So, Hans plays rook e4, we get queen to b5, king to d4, queen takes a5 played here, and in this position, Hans goes king e5. Now, at this point, it's all but over, because with the two pawns, pawns being blockaded in the center, Hans could have resigned, but he chooses to play on for a little bit longer. We get king to e5, queen c7 check is played, king to f5 here, and Hans decides to resign before Bartel can make his next move. Now, there are many ways to win. Probably the simplest one would be to play something like king to d6 here, because now after e7, black can sack the queen, and in this position, we reach a simple end game here where black has two connected pawns pushing up the board and he, and white will lose the pawn on d6. And so Hans chooses to play king f5 and resign the game. So a very, very interesting game, a very tactical game. A lot of chances both ways. At the end of the day, this was a game where the player who made the last serious blunder was going to lose. And in this case, it was Hans. Very, very interesting interesting game overall. And no, I'm not making a pun on purpose, but a, but a very interesting game. Both sides having great chances. Um... But at the end of the day, Bartel Mateus gets the win. For Hans, it's very difficult. He had a recent, very successful term in Croatia. Now in London, the London Chess Classic, he's lost two games in a row. He still, I think, is doing okay somewhere in the middle to the bottom half of the pack. I believe Michael Adams is winning the tournament very convincingly. But nonetheless, a game that I thought was worth reviewing. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this recap of the seventh round game played between Hans Neiman and Bartel Mateus. From the London Chess Classic, I probably will not be doing any more recaps from this tournament since the Chess Champions Tour starts tomorrow when I play against Maxime Bashi Legrand and Wesley So. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, make sure to smash that subscribe button below. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with a recap from the Chess Champions Tour being held in Toronto. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day.